Well, it's still fall and I had a bunch of fall colors left over from a previous pour. I thought I'd do another forest, but this time using AB Creative's photorealistic birch tree technique. So let's get started, shall we? I don't know about you, but this was like the hottest summer in Europe that I can recall in recent history. So, you know, I'm really digging this sweater and jeans, fall weather and fall colors. So I did a previous pour, actually I've done a couple, but I'll link one of them here up at the top for you to watch uh, where I've used these colors previously. And I'll list all the colors in the description box below. But this time, instead of using the fall colors as the top of the pour, because um, if you're familiar with my channel at all, I tend to do like botanical flower floral heads, I guess we're calling it. Uh, but this time I'm actually gonna use this on the forest floor. Yeah, as I do this air swipe, I'm not calling this a Dutch pour anymore because it's not what it is. It's not even a chaos style Dutch pour. We're going old school. We're going to call this an air swipe. Like, aren't these colors just beautiful as I blow them out? Like, seriously, I'm pretty impressed with myself. I mean, I really didn't create the colors. So, I mean, I'm just the luck of the blow dryer here, blowing them out in the way that they mix. I guess that's what I love about fluid art the most is like just the way the colors can mix. You could never achieve this with a paintbrush unless you're like a savant, but I'm not a savant. So once I get this kind of compositionally, the way that I you know, want the colors blown out here on the canvas, I'm gonna put in a base coat at the on the other end. I, I'm gonna use the oxide black mixed with phthalo blue, like that's like my new favorite base coat. I'm just gonna blow this out and then I'll blow the paint around a little bit more until I get the colors kind of where I want them. And then we are going to give AB Creatives photorealistic birch tree swiping acrylic skin technique a try. She says it's easy. I'm gonna give it a shot and uh, <laughs> see what kind of fall birch tree forest we can create. But of course, I've got a little something something coming at the end. So stay tuned if you wanna kinda see what that is. Because like I said, if you're familiar with my channel at all, I tend to do floral heads or I use the usually the riot of color um, as her bouffant hairstyle. This time we're gonna do a little bit different because I've been trying some different ideas of, uh, you know what, I'm not even gonna tell you, you're just gonna have to stick around to the end and find out what I'm actually gonna do with this thing when it's done. looking at this though I didn't feel like it had enough movement in the pour so I decided to do my second ever balloon smash now my paint is far too liquidy or too thin I guess you could say to do a proper balloon smash even though I let it set up while I kind of cleaned up the edges uh, but I really didn't want it to be I wanted it to be more abstract I didn't want the flowers or whatever you want to call it with the indentation that the balloon smash makes I didn't want it to be like so solid and so formed I just wanted some extra movement and some color in certain spots of this pour. So I tried to chase up some of the dark, inky, bluish black color and then smash down in the middle just to bring that color through and just trying to create like a little bit of a messy forest floor and all the different colors of the leaves. Okay, well, I'm just gonna let this dry for a few days and uh, let's make some photorealistic birch trees. That's what AB Creative said that they were. And of course I've got smut here on my silicone mat that I need to clean up, but anyway. All right, let's start out like just like she did. So this is the Titanium White by Amsterdam mixed with my pouring medium. I know that she uses water and PVA glue. You could do that too. And the consistency is just like any regular swipe. I've made lots of skins before. I've got a tutorial on making skins, my Awesome Blossom skins, but you can watch that if you're interested to see how I did a, a bloom style kind of skin. Uh, and this is the Silver by Amsterdam. She said that, of course, when this dries, it's gonna leave a nice 
silver kind of metallic color, which is kind of cool if you're thinking about like a silver birch tree, I guess. And then the black by uh, Amsterdam, oxide black. Yeah, there's no silicone or anything in my paints. And of course I'm gonna use the, uh, what do you call it, paper towel, keep it wet on the tip. Because she uses, I need to get this painting out of the way. I need to move it over. Uh, because the way that she did this, and I'm not quite sure why yet, but I'm sure I'll figure it out as we go. She put down like a white paint on the mat and she actually swipes the paper towel in that and then swipes it on the birch tree. Uh, I'm kind of getting why she dips it in the white because if you've got too much black at the end, uh, you're gonna make a black tree and not really a birch tree. Okay, so let's start over again. Use a new piece and there we go. Oh, see, I see why she does it. And yeah, okay, yeah, I'm not learning here, obviously. So uh, let's just flip it over and see if that works. Uh, no, let's just grab a new piece and start this whole thing kind of over. Um, yeah, I don't know how many of these pieces that I need, but let's dip it in the white. Again, Tiffany, do not deviate from the way she did it. Just follow the rules and then you will get photorealistic birch trees too. Yeah, I need to keep dipping it, but like, I don't want to keep wasting the paper towel either. And now I'm going to contaminate my white paint because that seems like a really good idea. Tanya, like always, if you're new to my channel, I fly by the seat of my pants. I really never have much of a plan other than I loved those fall colors that I used before and I wanted to use them again. And the canvas that I'm using is really big. So I'm not sure how many birch trees to make a full dense forest that I'm going to need. I'm probably gonna need to make a whole lot. So I'm just gonna probably speed this up in a second once I get like the first one down uh, so that you don't have to really, you know, painstakingly watch me do this over and over and over again. I'm sure you've got better things to do with the rest of your day. At least that's what my thought. And again, oh, too much black. Okay, live and learn. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go through a lot of this stuff. One thing I did forget to mention though is you can go ahead and torch over top of them and the little cells will kind of pop up. Um, which kind of, again, creates a little bit more of your photorealistic birch tree. I have to say, though, as I'm doing this, they do look very photorealistic. Now, she did branches, so I'm going to give it a shot. So I'm just going to kind of puddle the paints here on the canvas, all three colors, and then mix it up with my palette knife and see if I can create some branches. I don't know. I kind of put the tree trunks a little too close to each other, so it probably wasn't the brightest idea the way I laid this out. I really wasn't thinking about making branches initially, but then the trees just look like, you know, logs and not trees if they don't have branches. So let's see, huh? this is not so hard. Yeah, I mean, just use the tip of your palette knife and kind of drag it onto your mat. I don't know how easy this is gonna be to peel off. It's probably gonna be a bit of a nightmare because they're kind of thin and stringy. And anytime I've made acrylic skins before, when they're like kind of sticky, when you start to peel them off, and they stick to each other. I can't imagine that this branch idea was the best idea I've ever had, but I will just I don't know, wing it for now and just keep going. That's kind of where we're at. But as I'm doing this, the dumb thing is, I know I'm gonna have to cut these to size. So to put the branches on now seems kind of stupid, but <laughs> again, we're uh, just gonna go for it. And you know what, if I cut them off and do them later with a brush or with the palette knife and the puddle of paint, once they're actually on the canvas, then so be it. Because the, you see the one side where I swiped, it's kind of like notchy, gnarly looking. Obviously, I'm going to have to cut these straight. She's much better at this than I am. I'm not quite sure why I didn't get another straight edge. It kind of receded back a little bit. Um, probably because the silicone mat. Uh, who the hell knows? Okay, well, it's been a couple of days and I think they're dry. They feel dry. Yeah, they feel dry. I think I can start to peel them up. So let's go for it. But you see, right, how wonky they are on the one side. So I'm obviously going to have to cut this. I don't think the branches are going to come up very well, to be perfectly honest with you. But I don't know. Like, <laughs> okay, let's give it a shot. Ugh, sometimes this is supposed to be oddly satisfying, but I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I made them too thin. Yeah, and this is always a challenge that I have. See, I knew this was going to happen. And those little hairs sticking off the side... It's going to roll onto itself and stick to itself. And of course, I'm all about, you know, go big or go home. So these things are huge. So I know I've got a problem. So this is going to take me some time to peel all these up. I'm probably going to cut all the branches off because there's no way that that's going to work at the end of the day. And then, uh, yeah, so 
<laughs> here we go. I'm going to peel them up and probably just cut everything down. Hopefully I can get this to work properly. You know, what's funny is I get a lot of comments when I do make acrylic skins to say, how are you sticking them down to the canvas? I'm like, nothing sticks better than acrylic to acrylic. Like, have you ever had paintings that you put together face to face and you come back a couple of days and they're literally stuck like glue to each other? Yeah, sometimes you really don't need a whole lot to make acrylic skins stick to a canvas. Just as a FYI, like a lot of times I just kind of go after I place them all over the canvas. I come kind of come back see if I can lift up the edges or the corners and I'll put a little bit of glue under there, but they'll stick all on their own. They don't need a whole lot of help from Tiffany, that's for sure. And sometimes I put parchment paper like underneath the skin as I peel it up because I find it a pain in the ass when it actually sticks onto the silicone mat. Because if you want to talk about something else that's sticky, everything sticks to acrylic paint and everything sticks to the silicone mat. All right, so here we are, sort of finished. Um, as long as the blowout is concerned, and of course my 3D AB Creative realistic birch trees are quasi done. I ended up pouring them as you know and I added stems, but the stems were just too complicated and way too difficult. Uh, because my canvas is so large and trying to manipulate these was relatively difficult. I may even have to pour more of these or make more of these, I guess you'd say. I'm actually not sure um, because I don't know if I have enough to create the foresty look, the vision that I have in my mind. But let's get started. Let's try to position them on the canvas and then we will uh, either make more or, I don't know, figure this out. So hang with me. Actually, so, and some of them actually might be just too fat. I might have to trim them, but then in which case, if I trim them, I actually get two birch trees for the, for the work of one. So I don't know. Well, let's just see. It's kind of fun though, I'll admit. Like I thought this was kind of a fun thing to do. So let's start out with like a, I would have to assume that a large fat one would be like in the front, right? That's what I would guess. But is that like too fat? Uh, maybe it's like a little too fat for a birch tree. Cause they're not really fat, fat. Yeah, maybe I'll make this two. Make two. All right, and I can also make them shorter. You know, like everything I do, I never really have a concept in my mind about how I'm going to actually do this. But hey, uh, let's just see how we do. No turning back. First cut. And when you cut them, I just kind of kind of zigzaggy them a little bit, just so it's not a straight tree trunk. I don't know. Might or not, you know, class A straight trunk trees. I'm not that good of a swiper. <laughs> I'm not that good of a horticulturist. Would that would be what you be, or just a forester or tree planting maybe? Okay, so as you can see, I've got a, the paints all saved and I'm going to go over the base of the tree trunk and kind of blend it into the acrylic pour so that it's kind of like not a harsh edge that it actually looks like it's coming up from the forest floor. Again, I've never done this before. And now you're about to see exactly what all this preparation was for. So just sit back and watch. time we met face to face kiss on my neck how could i 
Up. And I named her Berkeley, by the way, which means uh, birch meadow, birch tree meadow. So as you can see here, I tried to integrate the base of the tree in with the painting. So it didn't look like an acrylic skin just kind of plopped on top. Yeah, I thought it was kind of an important detail. And then I also outlined the tree uh, to give it a little bit more of a shadowing and depth. They kind of all, I did all of them, or at least 80% of them. And then of course there's her and the silhouette of her kind of emerging from the top of the birch trees. I loved this concept. I originally was inspired by a photographer. And it's always hard on Pinterest to try to figure out, you know, who owns what. Um, but somebody had taken a photograph and of two photographs. It, it, I don't know how they do it, like some type of a super imposing. So they had like the birch tree meadow thing and then a picture of a woman and they superimposed it on top I don't know double exposed I guess you call it so I did my own variation here in acrylics because I can't photograph anything to save my life and then of course you'll see you know my hallway is obviously very fall inspired at the moment if you've missed these videos they're on my channel and I'll link one of them here at the end and you can watch them if you've missed them anyway ciao for now and we'll see you in the next video